Let's continue our exploration of algorithms that were generating beautiful patterns, colors, things like, you know, Julia set, Mandelbrot set, the Poisson disk sampling and all of those things. So let's continue that. And uh, as promised last week, this week we'll look at domain coloring. So, hey Ravi, how's it going, man? <laughs> I'm looking forward to this uh, domain coloring because yeah. I have really no idea what it is about. Yeah. Uh, so, I'll just, uh, so, we'll just look at the definition of uh, domain coloring mm -hmm. really quickly. Right. And uh, before I do that, let me just, um, let me just switch. Okay. Uh, so, let's look at what domain coloring is. Uh -huh. All right. So, in complex analysis, domain coloring or the color wheel graph is a technique of visualizing complex functions by assigning a color to each point of the complex plane. Uh -huh. By assigning points on the complex plane to different colors and brightness, domain coloring allows for four-dimensional complex function to be easily represented and understood. Mm -hmm. I think with the definition itself, you get a sense of what it is supposed to do. Mm. So supposing you had like a function and uh, uh, you know how functions can be converted into graphs and that's like a much more intuitive way of mm. understanding what a graph is. Mm. So the domain coloring does the same thing, mm. but on four different uh, dimensions. And mm. what I mean by that is, that, I, mean, I mean, you have like uh, X, Y, that's your imaginary dimension. And you also have the color depth. Mm. So now you have two more elements that are added to it. So sure. it can create things like the contour map mm. or things like that. Uh, mm. You know, sort of a, a color map or a contour map, mm. just like how you see on, mm. the, on the Wikipedia screen. Right. Right. So this is what it is supposed to generate. And mm. uh, at least for mathematicians, mm. not for me, mm. it's supposed to give you an intuitive understanding of what functions are right. or, or, or what or uh, or what functions look like on uh, on a, on a domain. Right. This entire thing is called as uh, you know domain coloring. Right. And uh, so so I'll just explain what this uh, wh why it is called domain coloring in mm -hmm. just a bit. But just look at this. So here's a function. Uh, here's the definition of the function. And right. if you plot it using the domain coloring algorithm, you will you should be able to see this. Right. Now that being said, domain coloring is a little bit more complex than what I'm going to be presenting over here more complex is yeah. that a pun intended <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah that's a nice catch so uh, i mean it's a i mean it's a little bit more involved than what i'm going to be essentially showing mm -hmm. but for anybody who's watching this this will be like a great introduction into domain coloring and right. basically carrying this forward right. there are other much more better materials available mm. on the internet mm. um, to basically program domain coloring but this right. will at least get you started Correct. with the knowledge that you already have right and the reason i say that is because you have already seen this happen in um, in, in Julia set and and uh, and um, and the Mandelbrot set, right? I mean, you uh, we basically had the imaginary and the real dimensions and all of those things. Correct. So let's just quickly take a look at um, this thing that I have uh, created. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's say I have a complex plane like this, and we keep saying complex plane. Basically, mm -hmm. it's nothing but a graph containing mm -hmm. x and y. Okay. Um, so let me just draw those dimensions. Uh -huh. um, call this blue and i'll say draw a line mm -hmm. so so let so this is like let's okay let me draw the imaginary plane that's the imaginary plane that's I'm the sorry, real that's the real plane all right what do i mean by real plane basically real numbers right so yeah so if um, if this for example was if this for example was zero yeah i'm sorry okay if this for example was zero mm -hmm. uh, this would be one and this would be minus one Okay. All right. So that's uh, so that's essentially so this would be this would be minus one just to make it a little bit more clear. The imaginary plane essentially extends to the to the second dimension. I'm going to draw this in a different color. Uh, okay. And it would look something like this. And once again, it mm. also has those dimensions. Oh, uh, let me make it a little bit more darker and mm. choose a different color red, for example. Okay. So once again, it's center point would be zero. Uh, this would be one and this would be minus one mm. as, as, as simple as that. All right. So we, uh, so, so on, uh, so on this, we can select any point that we want, mm. want. Okay. So let's say this is, for example, this is minus one comma one. All right. So let's say if this is minus one comma one, we put this through a function. It can be any function. Mm. All right. So let's say this is function f of 
z where z is the complex number which is denoted by minus 1 and 1 we put this and let's say this function is z square for example mm. whatever is the output of the z square mm. we put it through a hue map basically mm. we map it to this hue bar that is represented over here okay. we essentially need to get a value between 0 and 1 okay. why 0 uh, why 0 and 1 it's because mm. um on the hue map uh -huh. this would be 0 and this would be 1 So okay. I'm just mapping it to zero and one. Mm. Uh, so if if it is zero and one, you can see that zero point five is blue, zero point seven five is yeah is maybe dark blue. This is cyan, mm. and then green is somewhere at zero point three five or, or something like that. Right. So you you take the z square, give it a value between zero and one, which mm. is on the hue map, and then draw that. and then draw that value back so this will give you an idea of what the map is supposed to look like or right. or if you do this to every point on this complex Correct. plane right. it will generate some beautiful colors uh, and things uh, like that. uh, so uh. that's the whole point of uh, of of this sure now uh, let's look at the code also now the thing is mm. i don't want to go i mean uh, this week there will not be a lot of coding mm -hmm. involved so i don't want to go into a lot of um, coding this week because you have already seen this in the mandelbrot and the julia set um, ah, episode so it's so very just, yeah, it's similar it's very it? similar to that right all right uh, to begin with we have the index.html which has uh, the canvas and right. i'm calling it the domain color canvas uh, when the body is loaded i'm using i'm calling the As init usual. function right on the init function we create the context mm. we assign we get the width and the height and everything but uh, but more importantly we also convert this entire canvas into uh, its uh, into its pixels i right. mean we, we 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 are basically we are basically be uh, going to be doing pixel manipulation Correct. why because for every pixel we are going to be manip we are going to be uh, yes. evaluating something so i have the pixel information here which i'm going to be manipulating at the end of the init function it calls the color domain the color domain for every x and right. y right it essentially maps it to a minimum and a maximum value mm. all right so what it does is it converts our canvas let me just show the canvas right as it is it, right. uh, all right i know you are already seeing a result but yeah. don't worry about it essentially it converts this canvas into a graph mm. all right the same graph that i was like basically yeah. showing over here yeah. it's the same graph mm. into uh um into a graph i'm sorry so you get the a and the b value uh -huh. all right so uh, like i said i mean there is the, the uh, there is the real part of it and then there is the imaginary part of it the real okay. part would uh, would essentially be the x axis the imaginary part would be the y axis right. so once we have that we put it through uh, yeah so so once you have that we put it through a hue function right now the hue function is a function that is defined like this mm -hmm. it's just pi by max dot a tan 2 of the real comma uh, imaginary mm -hmm. uh, divided by 2 uh, into max dot pi this will give us a value that is essentially 0 to 1 oh okay, okay. got it uh, yeah uh, that being said let's just expand on what this max dot a tan 2 is i think everybody already knows what the what the a tan function is mm -hmm. uh, it's the arc tangent function which is i think the inverse of the Uh, normal of the tangent. trigonometric normal tangent function, a tan two is the same as arc tan, but instead it returns a value between minus pi and pi, or zero mm. and two pi, mm. uh, right? I mean, so uh, remember, uh, I think last week only we discussed that the 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 hue is actually a color wheel. I mean, we were discussing things like the color wheel and all of those things, right? So between pi and mm. two pi, right? I mean, uh, one pi is half, and then you got two pi. so it's either 0 to 2 pi or it is minus, minus pi, pi to pi, pi. Uh, it's Correct. the same thing i mean it's basically the same thing all right so we have that so we have hue and then we uh, so over here um, uh, okay so uh, i think if you uh, i'm once again referring to the julia and the mandelbrot set every pixel so once we get the pixel over here i mean once we get the image data and then we get the pixel the pixel data essentially um, has Uh, you know every pixel is essentially four integers right um yeah four integers RGB, which is basically alpha. yes uh, rgb and alpha right. so we need to convert the hue back into an rgb correct all right because i cannot just assign the hue directly to that pixel so i have the rgb which has three values 0 1 and 2 i put it in the pixel and then i just plot it essentially right okay now that being said what is this hsl to rgb 
Now I have put this in the code space dot API. Um, uh, I'm sorry, uh, let me just open that. I have put this in the code space dot API. Uh, you know, file that we use regularly right. and the source code for this, I essentially got it from Java itself. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at the color.java file, which uh -huh. is included in every installation of Java, right. the, the, the source code, uh -huh. it has this code. So I've just taken that, converted it into something that is compatible for JavaScript, JavaScript. and I have, uh, and I've just put it. Very cool. So the algorithm for this uh, hue saturation and lightness to RGB, I have taken it from Java. So right. once I have that, I have the three colors assign it to the three pixels and uh, and without entering any functions, this is what it will look like. Mm. All right? So you can see that the hue saturation, I mean, sorry, just the hue color wheel is very properly represented in a manner that we expect. Right. All right? So if you look at, once again, going back to this drawing, uh, and if you look at this, mm. and if you look at uh, if you look at this and this, right. you should see that it is essentially. So it the starts same. Oh, from I'm sorry. Yeah, all the it, way go, it goes clockwise. Correct. So it goes clockwise and it essentially yeah. starts here. Stops right. here. All right. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So that being said, I'm not doing anything with the. Uh, I'm not doing any calculations at all. Right. So this, for all intents and purposes, is just saying that f of z or the function of z, z is equal to nothing but z. Correct. Now let's look at what f of z of z square will look like. So uh -huh. if I was to say f of z is z square, right? right? So uh, so z is a complex number. Right. So that would uh, I mean I think if you recall once again uh, the thing that we did with Julia Set and Mandelbrot, uh, z square would be a plus i b the whole square. I mean this is I'm sorry the whole square. Right. So remember this is a plus b the whole square. Uh, where uh, i is, is minus 1. So the result would be a square minus b square. Once mm. again, just to reiterate, it's minus b square because i uh, i is square root of minus 1, which is an imaginary number. So we have this, and then it would be plus 2ab. Mm. Right? Two. So we have, uh, we have this. So we assign a square minus b square to the real component. Correct. And we assign uh, the imaginary component uh, to 2ab. Right. Now let's see what happens. Ah. Yeah. All right. Ah. So a square minus b square gives you a, a new uh, pattern uh, right. altogether. Um, now let's try, um, now let's try, so this is, yeah, so this is this, I'm sorry, I should have commented this part out, all right, let me do the same thing over here, let me comment this part out and let me try something else, all right, now I already have the formulas written out uh -huh. uh, over here, let's try z cube minus one, mm. that's another formula that we can use, um, so let's try this one z cube minus one. Mm -hmm. uh, once again, using the z cube, I mean, once again, uh, if you look at the uh, a plus b, the whole cube, it is a, uh, it is a, a cube, cube plus minus. three a square b plus ah, minus blah, 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 whatever. So I'm assuming, uh, I mean, so I'm uh, assigning the real component as uh, a cube minus, minus b, b cube, cube, and then the imaginary component over here. Mm -hmm. This is supposed to give us a totally different pattern ah. uh, pattern altogether right all right so let's say i make this uh, 10 let's see what happens ah, all right so sort of totally shift, different yeah totally shift different pattern more. it shifts more and uh, and mm. all of those things all okay right? so yeah so i mean of course we can like play around with this and see what comes out and yeah. we can like do this yeah. i'm not animating anything right now yeah. but let's just do that right uh -huh. i mean yeah so of course so we have this mm. and you have a lot more formulas to try out as well right i mean uh -huh. if you go back to the wikipedia page maybe you can like plot out this and uh -huh. see what see uh -huh. if you get this pattern uh -huh. right and like i was saying it's a little bit more involved right. than uh, than the most simplistic version that I'm presenting, but you get the idea of what domain color correct, is supposed correct, to be. Correct, correct, correct. All right. Yeah. So uh, in the references in the Wikipedia page itself, you'll see some um, uh, you'll see some um, places where you can try out different formulas. So you ah. can like basically take from that 
and then and then do it all right okay. but just to end this episode let's just animate this with the z cube minus 1 mm. and see what it looks like right sure. i mean let's just animate what do i mean by animate so 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 it is z cube minus 1 let's just take this minus 1 and then loop it through some uh, some arbitrary value all right so here it is 0.1 uh, i'm going to say i mean basically request animation frame of color domain so it basically calls the Sure. the color domain every time the the the, f- the next frame is ready mm-hmm. or uh, or whenever it is re- pro- finished processing the current frame it will call the uh, the next animation frame mm. and this i'll just make it as a variable mm. uh, where some arbitrary value is equal to 0.1 and what i'll do is say minus arbitrary and uh, at the end of every loop i'm going to say arbitrary plus equal to 0.5 let's just see what happens right no yeah. <laughs> right yeah it's a little bit slower than i was expecting but uh, still you yeah. get the idea of uh, what is what it's supposed yes. hold on man. let me say arbit plus equal to 2 right So anyways you get the idea of sure. what it is supposed to do uh-huh. right yeah uh-huh. oh it just think maybe it will cycle back you think i think so oh well, i think it's just done now red it's has just taken done. over yeah red has taken over yeah uh, <laughs> what else man hmm. um yeah that's about it i mean you can try many different formulas i mean yes. we've already tried z square z cube um z cube minus 1 maybe you can try uh, let's try 1 by z mm mm-hmm. All right, which is again. Oh yeah, you're right. I think it's done basically. Yeah, yeah. Let's try one by z and see what happens. Uh, now, I'm not going to be stopping the animation, but I'll just stop this. Uh, mm. Oh, sorry. Let it be. It's okay. It mm. doesn't matter. Let's try this. <laughs> so yeah so a totally different pattern with wow yeah, yeah. with uh, with this one yeah all right and of course it's not animating maybe maybe if i was to say into this arbitrary <laughs> so whenever you yeah. do this they tend to go towards something yeah right? they tend to go towards something yeah, yeah like yeah, uh, almost yeah. like then that will be like the domain coloring they're actually taking over certain domains yeah. madri yeah yeah oh yeah mm. so that's where the domain of domain coloring comes in mm. so essentially what it means to say is that the domain of red mm. is over here okay. the domain of blue is or the domain of cyan oh. is over here right. that's what the domain of domain coloring uh, essentially means correct, correct. yeah yeah so uh, so yeah you know that being said ravi uh that's all i had for this week actually sure. i know it's a short episode um hopefully the viewers like this kind of short yeah uh, yeah yeah thing. yeah and of course as always we'll upload code all of the there. code and everything they can try to out. get you started with domain coloring you can like go ahead and get uh, try out different try out different methodologies improve on this and things sure. like that Mixed. all right and next week mm-hmm. let's get a little bit more serious uh you know there isn't a single place on the internet you where mean you can from the imaginary world <laughs> we'll come to <laughs> the <laughs> world that's correct right so uh so let's do this mm. uh nowhere on the internet mm. will you find a place or a web service mm. where you can get the current uh, petrol prices ah, right. anywhere okay. for mm. for any i mean i, I know uh, i think the indian oil corporation hosts a website where you can get the petrol prices but there's no web service or anything like mm. that let's try to write one in in python sure. or at least collect the data keep it prepare it for uh, a web service or something like that mm-hmm. whether we do it in one episode or multiple episodes we'll see as uh, as no um, that's you know, always I, I, interesting yeah. anything at python yeah python I'm more, yeah. always <laughs> more interested so i'm looking forward to that yeah yeah all right man yeah, that's all thank you for joining uh, and please like share and and subscribe please tell your friends i'm pretty sure they'll be interested as well thank you for joining